Following a paid for by IMIC Incorporated. The Cure with Amy Cabo is brought to you by IMIC Research. Life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. Our show is available live on the radio through our app called The Cure our website, amycabo.com, that's Amy with an I, not a Y. On Roku, look for The Cure, or Android TV under The Cure, and leave us a podcast. We are broadcasting live from Miami. We created the show as a safe space and to show that there is hope after going through difficulties, despite any suffering, no matter what type, as I have come to find out that no one is exempt from suffering at one point in their life or another, or they could still be suffering. And it's okay. We're here for each other. I'm trying to use testimonies that could be helpful, and I'm inviting professionals and inspirational speakers that can help with suggestions. As a survivor, I hope to inspire others, encourage transparency, and find strength in knowing that those who suffer are not alone, and that those that heal against insurmountable odds do exist. I'm joined today by my partner in life and in work, Dr. Boris Nikolov. Hello. And today we'll discuss young adults and their life's challenges. Our special guests are Elizabeth and Philip Bruns. Facing transitions in life can be a challenge, and one of these big transitions is going from college student to college graduate seeking a first career job. Our guest today knows that it's not that simple to find the right job. They are successful professionals. Philip is a real estate developer and writer, and Elizabeth is a senior research scientist. They also provide assistance to those new college grads, among other people, via their workshop, launchmini.com. And now, their first book, From Launch Ministry. Elizabeth and Philip, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having us. I see that you guys work as a family, same as, same as us. How nice. We, yeah. Yes, we do. We, uh, we've been married for uh, 28 years and uh, enjoyed uh, every moment. Oh, you got us beat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elizabeth or Philip, what challenges do you see that young people face with launching their lives today? Well, I think, Amy, that there's there's a number of things that are, you know, uncertainty is always hard when you're making a big transition from formal schooling into what is that first that first career job. But I think today, uh, young people today, they face a couple of unique things that are very much on our heart. Uh, one is uh, an unprecedented amount of college debt. That college graduates are graduating facing, you know, a big, uh, you know, a big amount of debt that they have to recover from as they're trying to find in their first job. The other thing is that they've also come to age in, in, in the U.S. during a, a lot of economic challenges. Um, they've seen companies downsize. They've seen the economy struggle. They've seen their parents, their friends, or their loved ones get downsized or outplaced in their jobs. And it's just challenging to move forward when it seems fairly daunting to get that first job with the context of the economy and the debt situation. Right. And it's almost as if their their dreams are shattered because they spent so much time studying and going to school and getting this career. And then they're faced with these challenges that past generations didn't have. They're, they're faced with now having to pay a debt while they're trying to make it in life, which makes it twice as difficult. Yeah, specific to the uh, the debt, you're exactly right. Um, it, it is the highest the average uh, college debt is the highest is, is that it's ever been right now. And uh, it really does uh, show, and in, in, you know, I live a little bit in the housing market, it shows in first-time buyers, and, 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 um, uh, and it's, just, it's just harder for a young uh, man or woman to, uh, yeah, to be able to move through, whether it's finances and, and uh, you know, and other things, uh, you know, weigh on them. And, 
next thing you know, it can start to be a, be a struggle for them just day to day. Well, what would you say would be the 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 difference between the generations before us? Oh, oh, our generation, because we're not millennials. But what millennials are dealing with now compared to us and the generations before, has college gotten more expensive? Do people find it more important? Did they pay? Were people doing different jobs? Oh uh, well, I think I think uh, I think a couple of things have shifted um, uh, since since you know since it was our time we were going through that transition. I think um, one is uh, you know people have moved moved more away from uh, I'm talking about parents uh, thinking that their their kids you know sending their kids to a trade school or, or that even young people wanting to go to a trade school to become a plumber or an electrician and, and things of that nature and because uh, you know for any young person thinking about that considering that uh, that's actually there's tons of wide open fields there, um, and uh, I believe I, I, I heard a stat. I believe it's, it's something in the neighborhood of uh, in just a few short years there'll be a shortage of seven million uh, laborers in the U.S. And so that can get into other things related to politics and stuff we don't want to get into here. But but the bottom line is, if if a young man or woman wants to become a plumber, as an example. Uh, the chances are very good that they can go get trained to become a professional licensed plumber uh, fairly fairly quickly, and so that's that's that's, that's different, I think, from from um, back in back in our time when you know, people were were uh, at least my experience was they were discouraged to go into the trades, more encouraged to go to college. Well, now you have so many people going to college, there's a shortage on the trades. And so that's something right. that is good. Right. I, I know that past generations, any kind of hard work was appreciated as long as you're supporting your family. And life was a bit simpler. But now it's almost ingrained into our consciousness that to be successful in life, we must go to college and we must get a four-year degree. And that makes us somebody in life. And then we stand out in life. And then we can do something with our life. But research shows that recent college grads may end up underemployed, and they lack direction, at least what God intends in their lives. Yeah, we would we would agree with that. And part of the uh, not every college degree is necessarily matched up with an obvious college profession. I mean, a profession on the back end. And so I think the advice we would give young people, and maybe in the past it was easier no matter what degree you had, it would lead to a job. But today, that's just simply not the case. College is not a guarantee of getting a job, you know, in a particular field. And so whether it's looking at the trade as a route, trade training, um, college that is in service of a, um, of a specific job, or even doing half college in a community college setting versus doing all four years in a university setting, those all things can, can affect dramatically your ability to get a job on the back end as mm-hmm. well as afford a job on the back end. And we would really invite young people and their parents to, to, to not be constrained with the idea that a four-year degree at an expensive you know, university is going to be, you know, is going to be an automatic uh, transition that's easy on the back end of that. And it might not be the right match for who the student is. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I graduated a nurse, but then I started having children and I didn't like how my parents were never home and I didn't want 12 hour shifts. So God blessed me and I got married and I find out I trained I trained how to become a study coordinator that, guess what, makes just as much or even more than a nurse, and it's a nine-to-five job. I was Mm -hmm. able to be there for my kids. So what I went to school for, I never used. My husband's a doctor, and he just created a business. He's not working here as a doctor either. So going to college is, is not like you said, it's it's not a guarantee, and most people are disillusioned, thinking that that's an automatic thing, and instead they end up with a big debt. Well, and one of the things we try to we're exactly we're exactly in agreement, and one of the things that we have really tried in our in our book Launch Your Life is to offer some strategies of thinking through how God made you 
as well as a bigger view of what employment and career might look like. Uh, because knowing who you are and what you like is almost as important or even more important than what you're choosing to do after school. Because if you don't do it informed around where the job is that might be a good match for me, versus just assuming a four-year degree is going to lead to that, it does lead to broken hearts and broken dreams from our vantage point. And you can really help that also as a parent if you have a you know, middle school or, or a teenager in high school. Uh, just what Beth is saying is to help them discover who they are, what they like, what they don't like, what, what classes are they good at, what classes are they not good at. You know, that kind of um, uh, discovery can really help a student uh, pick and choose later on uh, a, a major college major if they choose that or uh, a trade or whatever they might that's going to be a good match for them um, you know earlier on than, than going through college and all of a sudden discovering oh wait a second I didn't actually like uh, like my nursing degree as you did yes for example if you're good at, good with people and you enjoy helping people there's so many different things or different careers and different ways that you can help people there's a unlimited amount of ways that you can help people and it doesn't necessarily require a college degree it it could be on the job training or it could be a a a school but what, what are they called the vocational vocational right? schools yes yes so yeah. vocational yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, we would also recommend for any any young person uh, making a transition from high school into whatever is that next step to 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 really embrace the idea of networking. You know, find people that are a little bit older than you that you think may be in a field that would be well suited to you or in a job that you might be well suited for. Ask them how they got their job, how they got started. Uh, there's a good chance that their college degree may not have mattered or was it even a factor to getting that job, or they may not have the four-year degree either. But I would steer pe young people to engage in networking and mentoring around careers um, as much or even more so than just what university and what degree are, are going to go together. I mean, one of the saddest things that, that we hear, and we mentor a fair amount of young people making this transition is that when we talk to somebody who's either facing graduation, is on the back side of graduation, and they genuinely have no idea what kind of job that they want to get, let alone what would be well suited to them, and you put on the debt of today for college, on top of that, it does get to be very discouraging very quickly. Yes, and are they also limited to being at the college and what they're studying at the college rather than networking and interacting with people and learning from others and trying to use their gifts to the best of their ability? Because I know that when I was in a four-year college, that's all I saw was studying. I thought of yeah. nothing else. And so that was my world, whatever was inside the college. And my little daughter of home, at home, of course. Well, you, your case is also a little bit different <laughs> because, you know, nursing is studying to be a nurse. But there is nowadays so many things that you study that you really don't know what you work with. In. I mean, it's like, I don't know. There, there, there is. There's a lot, a lot of majors. And uh, what we did with, with our children, and we encourage other parents to do as, as their, their child is growing up in, in through high school, and, and especially late high school, is to uh, think about, uh, about the, the major. Now, you may not know exactly what you want. We kind of compare it to, to wanting to go on vacation. Um, you know, if you can just start to narrow it down, let's start out, you know, you're a junior in high school and, you know, we're just thinking, we're just thinking something in the sciences. And, and when you think about a vacation, you're thinking, okay, let's just go out west someplace. And then, and then through a process of, of talking with them and maybe talking with teachers and, and, and uh, as Beth mentioned, other mentors and people that can help, you can narrow it down to from going on vacation out west to, you know what, let's just go. Uh, out to uh, uh, Washington, the state of Washington. Like, okay, and then you can narrow it even farther to, like, you know what, let's go uh, to Seattle and we're going to stop at Mount Rainier. And you can you know, really focus in on where you want to go on vacation. Similarly, as your major, through, through discussions with people that know you well, 
And as parents, you can help uh, kind of shepherd shepherd these conversations so that a child can at least have an area, if not a specific major, and then let that drive your college of your choice if you choose to go to college. Um, you know, some, sometimes you know, students go to college uh, just because. Uh, and just because their parents wanted them to go or just because, you know, they're kind of expected to go and they really don't have a lot of good direction into what they want to do in college. And that hampers them, too, uh, while during a time there. And um, and we've seen that as well, like on the back end, they, 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 they get a degree and then they kind of look at their college resume and. And there's not been a litany, you know, some good steps that have narrowed down not just their major, but also uh, getting that job on the back end. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it too much. Uh, For example, I have a mother of a millennial, and she has a friend. Of course, she's a millennial. And they both don't feel like they're in a good place. And um, it's it's really difficult for them. I'm seeing it everywhere. But um, for those that are tuning in, I'm your host, Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. Today's show is helping on is focusing on helping young adults find their way. We are joined by Elizabeth and Phil Bruns, authors of Lunch Your Life, and this is The Cure, Live Fridays. Please stay with us. Love is the answer, God is the cure, reveals from a very sincere and honest position, Amy Cabo's life, a warrior who didn't give up and achieved the dream of her life. You can get to know more about her and her story on www.godisthecure.com or buying her book on Amazon.com. And now we continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure on 880 The Biz. Welcome back to the show. For those that are just tuning in, I'm your host, Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. If this is your first time tuning in, we are talking to... Elizabeth and Philip Brooms about how to help young adults find their way, just like I did. (laughs) I like this quote from their book, actually. When you understand who you are and how God is at work, you can really start to dream. If you can establish those dreams in the foundation of God and His Word, you can soar. Elizabeth, how can we help these young adults give them a more meaningful dream? Well, I think part of the key on on dreaming like we're talking about is, is making it a match between seeing God work in your life and getting some insights around what God's dreams are for you and then attaching those to the dreams that you have. It's got to be, it's, you know, we, we advise people to look do an inquiry with themselves and with God around where is a good match. And, um, you know, I'm an engineer, I'm a technical person, and one of the things that I, that I take great um, purpose in is mentoring of young people. And it may not necessarily be obvious looking at my life as a highly technical person in a highly technical job, like how can that possibly be useful to God, that God has given me a skill set to be able to mentor and to coach people in career development and getting a, a professional dream that's in service of, of, of God. Mm-hmm. And so that's just an example of, you know, not being afraid for, in my case, embracing who I am as a technical person, but also embracing what God's put on my heart, which is helping, you know, particularly young women who are in technical careers or math or engineering or science careers that can be a little bit daunting sometimes as females, but providing the support and providing some ministry for younger people that are younger women in particular that are in those fields, I really feel like that's something that God has a dream for me and that I've embraced with God. And part of our book is meant to help match that up between an inquiry with God and an inquiry with yourself so that you can be, you know, grounded in what God wants you to dream about. Nice. So basically, integrate God into your life, into your work, in, into what you do, so that you could see how God could work through through you. And I, I see what you mean that because I, I know that we need to work, that we need to work to live, to survive. A God and career and social life; those things are not separate. It's all intertwined. It all comes together because most of everything we're doing, we do in the service of others. Therefore, 
everything that we do, mostly we do in this for the glory of God. Yes, we feel like that is, you know, one of the major things we help people with on top of the, the dreaming idea is that they could see that their whole life is useful for God, not just uh, sometimes, sometimes our Christianity gets reduced to, you know, when we do church activities, when we go to church or, you know, do something like that, when we serve in a church versus looking at it as your whole life is in service of God, you know, um, that's a really, really important point as you take on trying to formulate a career, uh, is that knowing that what you're choosing to spend your time on um, any moment of the day is in service of God, and how can you make the most of it in that way? And how you can make the best of out of every day, and how can, you could be a better you each and every day. But, I mean, even above all the careers and anything that we can do as a career, I think the most important, meaningful job that we have is how we treat each other what impression we leave whether we make an imprint into the world whether we make a difference whether we set a good example for somebody whether we're a good friend to someone and we lend an ending ear or whether we make somebody maybe an orphan feel loved or uh, somebody who's nervous be calm i mean all those little things those things, you find opportunities of those things in work, in career, in your social life. And I, I believe that it's important to have Christianity for mental strength and for self-discipline. And sometimes I do worry about the millennials and our youth. They feel so much against the world that a lot of them are straying away from Christianity. Well, I think, uh, Amy, I think it's very easy for us, uh, whether we've grown up in a church or are not, is to really minimize the power of God in, in, in our lives. And in one way that happens is we don't see how God has really worked in our lives. I mean, we believe that, that um you know, that God has, has been working to help help create our lives and who we are uh, through all of our lives. Um, it's, it's in fact in the book, in the Launch Your Life book, we referenced, um, you know, David at one point, he looks, it's almost like he's looking at a baby or looking, holding a baby maybe himself, but he thinks about how wonderfully he was made, um, physically, uh, as a small, uh, baby and how wonderful he was, you know, created in his mother's womb and so forth. And so from the very beginning, um, uh, you know, we feel like God's been working in our lives through different experiences, whether it be at school, whether it be at home, through different people, whether it be a parent or a friend, um, to bring us to the point to who we are through likes and dislikes and, and creating a whole package. And God's worked very hard. You know, there's other scriptures that talk about, you know, really, uh, God, that we're like uh, clay pots, and God is the potter, and just molding, molding these pots with his hands. And I think he takes, we think that God takes a very um, daily vested interest into our lives. And it goes way more than just a Sunday morning, uh, that he cares for us each and every day. And he doesn't do that, um, you know, just, just because, that it, right, that, that we're here to, as you said, to be involved to help other people, whether it's, uh, someone in need financially or someone who needs that just needs a, a smile to encourage them um, or to help someone else discover who God is. And and so I think God really works. And I think further, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, millennials a couple of times. I think one of the things that we've discovered as we talk to, whether it's uh, millennials or uh, uh, Generation uh, Z, uh, you know, younger folks, um, is that they are really an amazing group of people. Um, yes. I think that they have... Uh, Resilient, an, strong. They, yeah, they have exactly. to be. They have to be. Yes. It was that group of people that inspired us to really write the book. Well, and they are our future. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and uh, growing up in an amazing, amazing time. Thank God. Thank God, and because... Them, if we can just connect them, I mean, the, the realities of the world they are inheriting is a, is a challenge. 
And I admire any millennial who is rising the challenge, trying to figure it out and live an inspiring life. And I think sometimes the challenge of the world that we live in that they that they are inheriting, they do take, you know, they do feel the weight of that. And I think sometimes that can be misunderstood as discouragement or depression or, um, which there is discouragement and depression in it, but it's not coming from a place of laziness or that I don't care or that, you know, I, I, uh, I'm discouraged. It is from a, I want to move forward. I just don't know how to do that with God at times. I don't know how to dream for God at times, and I don't know how to put that dream for God in place with a concrete plan with a good career vocation. When you're not spending 40 hours your week doing something you feel like God's called you to do, that's a long week. And so we're trying to bring those concepts together in the, the Launch Your Life approach. That's beautiful. Elizabeth, another quote from your book that you said, you are invaluable. There is not another you. You are the only one who can fulfill the role God has offered you, and he has been preparing you for some time. I guess young adults are getting ready for just they just don't know it. And Philip, I've loved the case studies in your book from the Bible and his and history. When we return, can you tell us how God is already preparing for us career through these stories? What do we you mean by a personal brand? After okay. this song, we will continue talking to Elizabeth and Byrne okay. to discuss the challenges young adults face, such as being broke, struggling or lacking faith. This is Amy Cabo, and you're listening to The Cure. And now we continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure on 880 The Biz. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, and this is The Cure. We're live every Friday at 2 p.m. on your radio or The Cure app for Apple devices. And today we are joined by Elizabeth and Philip Bruns, and we're talking about helping young adults with life's challenges. Boy, I remember when I was young, dumb, and broke. I'm not so young anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Okay. <laughs> okay, but Elizabeth and Noah <laughs> and Phillips, um, about, let's say, how do we... How do we avoid young adults to start their life broke financially and or spiritually? Well, I think um, let me start with the spiritual part of that first, because I think the financial part can stem from the spiritual, uh, a spiritual uplift. And uh, part of that in the Launch Your Life book, and you referenced it, we referenced it just before the break, a uh, passage that uh, that I'll be honest with you, when, when I wrote it, I actually had tears on my eyes, and it was actually one of the more passionate moments when I was writing it about how special you are, and there's only one of you. And it's, it's pretty, you know, and we go uh, in depth into that in the book, as you know, but it's a pretty powerful thing to think about God has hand, hand made me. And handmade you and billions and billions of other people, none of which are identical to each other. And God has worked in your life, you know, to create who you are and all of that. And uh, it's 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 pretty special to think about that and to really let that soak in. And uh, so I think I think you start with that, and then you can you know, dream a bit for God. And I think just getting um, getting you know sometimes uh, you know sometimes people. Um, you know, view a relationship with God in in the uh, just I, I go to church and I, I pray before meals or something like that, or I, I think you know I go to church just once or twice a year, and it's just it can be so much more than that. Uh, relationship with God, walking with God is prayer and Bible study, personal ministry. We talk about that in the Launch Your Life book, but uh, but becoming uh, having having um, uh, what I would say a, a, a real and true relationship with God. Um, can really lift your spirit and really yes. lift who you are and give you confidence. Yes. And then that can address the financial thing. You can feel a little bit taller when you go into a job interview or you can, uh, you know, go go to your, your day job and you can maybe sell a little bit more than what you were before, whatever it might be, whatever that job is. 
Uh, but if you have that relationship with God, that can help you perform better just day to day. And uh, you do that with you know, some of the other things we suggested in the book, and that's going to help your financial situation. Well, I think as long as God sees you trying and you're struggling, and he sees that you're trying, you're putting the effort, you're putting the work, and you're kind to people. If you do good things, believe it or not, good things come back to you. And that person can run into somebody, and they meet, and all of a sudden, he's got a great job opportunity for him, finds out that he's the right match. And God does put the right people in our path like that, even if we don't have that in mind, and we discover our talent by mistake. Yeah, some of that is, it is a world, it is a world view. You know, do you... He does work in mysterious ways. Yeah. <laughs> but is, but I think that's, tell me what you mean by personal brand. We have our personal brand. Well, we go into some, some detail in the book around discovering and being intentional about a personal brand. And one of the things we talk about is that you consume products and brands every day. And you consume products and brands for reasons that you're enthusiastic about. A lot of times, the things that you consume in terms of products and brands, they have, you know, a higher purpose or a higher meaning. You appreciate their social cause. You appreciate their environmental footprint. And they're useful. You appreciate, yes, they're useful in whatever job you want them to do in your life. We would suggest that people have brands, too. And that when you are interviewing for a job or you are an employee um, at a particular job, that your equity are those things that you're known for. And one of the things we try to help people get in touch with, which is what are those personal equity things that can amplify your effectiveness in the job just because you're oriented toward God and God's word. Love is one that's gone back to a lot. Um, in this in this interview, you know, being kind and loving and choosing humility, servitude, those are all godly qualities that what employer wouldn't want. And, and so I bet, really and I bet try. you, all the bad qualities we don't like—that's from the enemy, like anger and jealousy and revenge and hatred. Yeah. And you know, I think I don't know where I read it, but somewhere it says you should only have good things in your mind and think good things. And that's that's of God. But if you think yeah. negative things, that's not good. That's not from yeah. Him. Ignore that one. Yeah. yeah. Simple. It's easier said than done. But yeah, the more that that consumes the things and that are. And that's involved. why I pray. That's why yeah. I pray, pray, pray. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. But you guys go a little further than that. You guys talk about a concept called IPA, intentional planning action. Was it? Wow, you really yeah. read the book. Wow, I need to admit, guys, something. I read only some <laughs> part of the book. It's a great book. I will, though. I will. <laughs> you know, IPA. I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, you know, it's and, and I even uh, uh, you kind of quip uh, uh, in the, in the book of you know if you're familiar with craft beer, uh, the, the IPA that we write about in the book is going to give you a lot more uh, benefits than uh, India Pale Ale will at your uh, local <laughs> pub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. And so, yes, uh, so, uh, you know, when, when in, in our lives, we sometimes we set goals, we have things like, gosh, I wish we, you know, I, I would love to go to uh, Europe on vacation, or I would love to go do this, or I have a goal of that. And we kind of think that we, we maybe have that intention that we put out there. Uh, the P stands for planning. We might even, you know, plan to to go to Europe as an example. Uh, plan plan uh, the flights. Plan the uh, you know where we might want to go, what cities. Uh, but unless there's action, unless there's action, we don't have to pack, pack our bags. The intention and the planning are just dreams and thoughts. Is all they are. And we need the A. We need the action. Uh, intention, planning, and action, IPA. So we talk about that. It's funny because it was actually the very last thing that we wrote, but we put it right at the front of the book uh, because any kind of uh, growth, any kind of changes, any kind of goals or dreams you want to put out there, unless you have action towards those said goals, dreams, action, uh, you know, whatever that might be, unless you have action towards that, they're just going to remain thoughts. And so we really wanted to put some practical um, uh, 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 things that you can do, uh, exercises uh, in the book, 
in a Launch Your Life book so that you can actually uh, achieve said dreams or work towards those. And uh, and then at the very, very end, we talk about just every day, every week, every month, you know, you're working towards those goals, working on your life, working on moving forward. I was talking with a, uh, a mentee a couple of weeks ago, and I have a follow-up with her next, next week, as a matter of fact. She really needs to make a job change. She's not happy. She does not think it's God's will. Uh, she desperately needs a job change. And so then as we're talking through what that job could be and where she could go, what does it mean for her resume, I could tell she was a little hesitant on the whole action part. And so I bring up something to the effect of how are you going to put this into action? And she said something to the effect, well, I'm going to pray about it because God's going to part the Red Sea. <laughs> and I, uh, and I, what I said to her is, I yeah. said, "Listen, friend, I <laughs> said God is not going to part the Red Sea if you don't walk up to the edge." Ah, there you go. Um, and so it is. The Bible is clear about asking, seeking, and knocking. And even in that story, the Israelites had to walk up to the sea, or it felt daunting, and then the seas parted, and she got it. You know, you can't, and that would be one of the things we would just advise is a step forward, a goal, while you're praying to have that character. That's a big part. It's a very action-oriented book, not a philosophical book around how to move forward in your life. Nice, and that's so important because action is what makes it actually happen. And and so many of us, and I, even when I was a kid, I know I wasn't big into action. I think that's what you get with maturity. But, yes, it's it's very important because otherwise, like you said, it's just a thought. And you know, with the, with the Launch Your Life book, we, uh, we write, write in that first section, you know, we want to help with the I and the P, but ultimately it's going to come down to the person for the A. And, uh, but sometimes we, you know, we just need cheerleaders. And so a lot of times when we get with, uh, you know, the younger, younger people, we, we tell them we're, ju- we're like their biggest cheerleaders and uh, make and, and help them, uh, not just feel, but help them to know that they can accomplish whatever that goal is or whatever they, they want to do. And that God is, in fact, going to use them in their life, whether they're a student, whether they're a worker, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, we, we go into in the book a number of uh, biblical men and women um, where God clearly used their lives through their jobs and their great stories, uh, not because they quit their jobs and, and, and went and, and did these amazing things for God. Um, it, was, it was God working through their careers, working through uh, who they were. And it's, it's an amazing, when you look at those people as workers uh, or people that had jobs, they got up every morning, went to work. Some of them had some real high-level jobs. Um, and see how God worked through their, through their full life. It's, it's pretty inspiring, really. Yes, it is pretty inspiring. And just to let people know, I mean, even young people, we have a lot of love to give. And not only that, we have some knowledge through experience, knowledge that you can only learn sometimes through experience. So we can be helpful to each other. And um, you, you went with the, with the young, you put yourself in the young category? No, no, I'm that's not, young. I'm not so right. young anymore. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I'm just, just reconfirming your statement here. So I'm, I'm still saying there too. Okay. <laughs> then. <laughs> We're all young you know, at heart. Yes, a go. lot of love to give. Remember, a lot of love to give. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And that, that's basically what, what it's all about. And But it is really interesting because I've known a lot of people, even my sister, and what she's doing. And, you know, God does work. It, he works through people and their careers. And she's done a lot of good things through her career. My niece is doing a lot of good things with, with in college. She wants to travel and help people and do ministry. So... And later on, maybe get, you know, there's just so many things that happen. And you think that all there is to work, life is existing, working, and making the bills. There's much more to it than that. And everybody goes through a spiritual journey. You can't avoid it. Everybody at one point or another questions themselves. What am I here for? What's my purpose? Everybody goes through that. So... 
we all go through the challenges that we need to unleave. But I believe that the only way to get through successfully is through God. Otherwise, life is very scary and very difficult, not worth it. Trust me, been there, done that, don't want to go there again. Yeah, we would agree. You know, and even in, even in some of the challenges, when I talk to, I think when I talk to some of the my mentees, um, and when they get to the other side of trusting in God as it relates to something about their future or overcoming something in their past, when they can really see how it's God that's been supporting them, it's almost like it's a springboard for more more love, more focus in being useful for God, more integration of God into their whole lives. And sometimes we think we just have to help help each other kind of string together that I see how God's working in your life uh, as we are walking with our God ourselves um, and, you know, and following his word. Uh, there's a whole virtuous circle that can be for good and for great things uh, by embracing that God has a path for us, and we need to just embrace it and kind of get on it. Right. And we're, we're coming to an end, but one more question, if I can get it out of you guys. Do you have any piece of advice for parents or grandparents? What would that be if you had any piece of advice for them? You know, as, as you're the young person uh, uh, that's, that's uh, the, the child or grandchild, as they get older, you know, we, we shift from uh, being more of a you know, a hands-on parent kind of a, a relationship to being more of an advisor. And so we encourage parents to move into the role as, as your child is in college and beyond. You're just a, you're really an advisor. Uh, but maybe more than that is what I said earlier about just being a big cheerleader. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of headwinds. Be their biggest fan. Be their biggest fan. And, right. and they cannot have enough people telling them how amazing they are, how special they are. They're doing a great job. Keep going after it and inspire and encourage and be a big, fat cheerleader. And uh, and I think that's the best thing they can do for young people. Yes. Be the person you want them to be. Yeah. 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 It's exactly. I love it. Thank you guys so much. And believe it or not. We've come to the end of the show once more. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to share with all my listeners. A big thank you to you all, our special guest, Elizabeth and Philip Bruns, co-host Boris, and the great Wanda. Oh, but she left. Again, thank you, Elizabeth, Philip, for your participation. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. More information on Elizabeth and Phil Bruns can be found on amycabo.com under guests. Please check it out and get their book, Launch Your Life. I'm your host, Amy Cabo. This has been The Cure. Thanks for listening. Please go to amycabo.com for previous shows. And until next time. The Cure with Amy Cabo was brought to you by IMIC Research, 786-310-7477 or www.godisthecure.com. Tune in every Friday at 2 p.m. for The Cure with Amy Cabo right here on 880 The Biz.